So this one came up a lot, and this particular question is from Yosef, but will this technology ever be used for gaming? Yeah, probably. hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, hundred percent, yeah. That's one heck of a claim they just made there. So how seriously can we take that? How about the rest of the conference? I mean, they brought out the pig, so something cool must have happened, right? If the things presented went over your head and out of this world, stick around for us to land the ideas right back down to earth and subscribe since you'll get a lot more stuff like this if you stick around. Hello Virtual Dreamers, Marcus Stahl here. For the uninitiated, Neuralink is a company that develops brain-computer interfaces started by Elon Musk. They just had a conference this past week showing off the latest iteration of their premier technology, the Neuralink. For a lot of people, brain-computer interfaces are the future of immersive technology, mental disease treatment, and the human species as a whole. And on the surface, that is what Neuralink has promised to deliver. Jokingly referred to by Elon Musk as a Fitbit for your brain, the Neuralink has a wide array of sensors, processors, and transmitters that enable the Neuralink to tackle a wide range of applications that promises the ability to both receive and return information that suits the applications required. Thanks to a Bluetooth interface, this will be highly accessible, and they've already made promises to do everything they can to ensure the technology will be both safe and secure. So don't worry, you can take it off if you need to. Just look at the pigs there, they didn't have any trouble. Which brings us to the more talked about part of this whole demonstration. Neuralink brought out three pigs to serve and demonstrate different things. A pig with no Neuralink, one with a Neuralink, and one with a removed Neuralink. They only recently gained permission for human testing, so this was pretty much all they had to work with until recently. But when you consider just how similar humans and pigs are in terms of structure, the results they obtained here are incredibly promising. Using nothing more than the activity from the brain, they could ascertain the activity of a pig's snout and the movements it was making with, as they said, high accuracy. If you don't know the value of that, just consider that an accurate enough read of movement intent could be used to read user inputs for things like virtual reality games or to serve as data for prosthetics and exoskeletons. Both of which are applications which they arguably are just as prepared to work on considering that Neuralink has a 1024 electron channel system available that allows them to both read and write information. That means that they have the ability to read up to 1024 points of electrical activity on your brain at a time. And at each point, they will have the ability to excite things with a precision of 1000 neurons per electrode. Which is great because this is a less is more approach. And having control over a thousand points to stimulate electrically at a greater precision level than could be done before could mean great things for possible treatments of neurological diseases. It's all in all pretty great. Looking at all the stuff that they've got going on here, one could say that we're just about there when it comes to pulling off that starburst dream and beating up the bullies with mind-powered Tesla robots that a lot of young people are probably imagining. After all, this is Elon, right? He's never been wrong and made a prediction that hasn't come about on time before. Yeah, I'm gonna stop stroking Elon's ego right about there. I'm certain there's an element of truth to the things Elon has presented before us and some of the claims that he's made. But the reasons why I think so are just as much the reasons to know that we haven't seen anything here that should get people's hopes up for things like full dive coming any faster than it previously has, or at the very least, any faster than say, a year versus a decade sooner. When Elon said that Neuralink was kind of like a Fitbit for your brain, He's kind of being a little bit literal here. Both size and functionality wise, Neuralink seems to be using the hardware of modern microcomputer platforms like smartwatches to lower costs and make things more accessible. Obviously, there's more to it than that, and the material science and the actual electrocorticography part of the equation matters quite a bit. 
The point here is the Neuralink itself isn't going to do much for processing. So all of my 12 year olds out here who can't even buy a regular VR gaming PC should probably know that you're going to need to have that at the very least before Neuralink will be of any use to you for VR gaming purposes. Okay, let's say you do have a VR gaming PC. Does that mean that you're just one surgery away from watching virtual sunsets at native brain resolution? Well, it seems unlikely to me unless you're ready to turn your whole skull into Neuralinks, since 1024 points is far from what one would consider sufficient resolution to encompass the whole of our body's sensory array. Assuming a very direct approach of one stimulator equating to one pixel, we'd optimally need millions of connections just for the sense of vision. Please note, that isn't meant to be a very direct example. We'd appreciate you referring to actual optic scientists or someone specialized in the subject for a better grasp on that particular area. But I think the example should illustrate how potentially enormous the stimulation load we could have depending on our sense. This is, of course, assuming that we have a good grasp of how to do so from the brain at this point. Which, considering that Neuralink opted to not even talk about that very much, tells me they probably are waiting on brain mapping and more data just as much as their peers in the industry are to move forward. Which brings us to the biggest thing that should serve to temper our expectations. Neuralink isn't in this field alone. While what is being done at Neuralink is very likely approaching or is at the very peak of the brain-computer interface space, you must remember that there are a lot of other companies and organizations involved in this and that they've all had their fair share of successes and troubles as well. The big showstopper, what's going on here moment for Neuralink, to me at the very least, was when they brought out the pigs to demonstrate that they could discern high fidelity movement and action data based on the Neuralink information alone. To be honest, this took me aback when I first saw it, because it is very much what we'd consider to be the ideal for brain-computer interface data interpretation. At least, that's what I was thinking until I started to think on it a little bit more. You see, I couldn't help but get a sense of deja vu when those charts and movement behaviors popped onto the screen. It took me a bit, but I eventually realized why that feeling had overcome me. I'd seen this before. The highly accurate language choice, the impressive visualization of data tracking. Just about all of these items were things that I encountered around 2013 to 2015 when I was doing everything in my power to see a brain-computer interface solution in EEG where there wasn't one. If you watched Gregory's last video on this topic, good on you, that was a one hour long brain regurgitation that you just endured there. But you will recall that there was a lot of exasperated begging going on over the subject of numbers. You see, we've been at this game for over eight years now, people, and the lack of any claims or direct footage promoting Neuralink as a revolution for motion controls that will bring about a new era of remote work in a couple of years tells me that they know that there's a lot of work that still needs to be done and that their claims are more for the potential of brain-computer interfacing and the future of Neuralink rather than the immediate reality. So yeah, if you ask me, will anyone be playing StarCraft with a Neuralink in a few years? You'll get a yes. It's just with the caveat that they will likely be struggling while doing so and not owning anyone in the uh, competitive scene. To many of you, this probably sounds like I'm just dumping on Neuralink and the work of the people behind it. Don't misunderstand me. I'm actually rather excited for Neuralink on the whole. That entire section we just went through is aimed at the people who are trying to turn a wonderful innovation forward in technology into something that it's not. For the people who Neuralink will actually be used by and relevant to, just about 
everything about the Neuralink is good on the whole. We can spend all day here whining about how we can't play Sword Art Online with a brain-computer interface of today, but we'll just end up looking like entitled jerks next to the handicapped and sick people who actually will be getting and using this stuff. When you're coming from very little to no performance at all from your body, every little gain can be a life-changing difference. And there is nothing I or anyone in the public can say to take away from that. It's just a Fitbit for your brain? Great! That means it's not going to be unnecessarily expensive from using proprietary hardware and increases its repairability. Other people have done a lot of similar stuff that we've seen with the pigs today. Great! We're just adding another group of talented people to the list now, and these people have a wealthy and enthusiastic patron backing them. Science is a process that works better the more people you have working on the same thing, since the body of knowledge is cumulative and adds on to itself, refining our understanding more and more with each experiment and change. If the best that we had before was using 16 channels and gave us some degree of movement with sensor fusion, we'll now be able to observe how much of an improvement using 1024 channels will make. Is it huge? Great. Is it small? Great. One result tells us that keep on adding more sensors. The other tells us that maybe we're hitting a diminishing return and should come up with some other ideas. So long as the end result continues to add to the body of knowledge we have to work from, I consider the effort a net win for everyone. So yeah, while I'm pretty sure Generation 1 and even 2 of Neuralink probably won't be used for any serious gaming or be competitively viable, and that immersion is probably a long ways off, I'm also just as sure that whatever results we do get now will contribute to the day where we do have quadriplegics that are wrecking people at the highest levels of competitive play in games like StarCraft. So Neuralink, as far as I'm concerned, is a company that is going to do great things in the brain-computer interface space. So yeah, it's no skin off my back if they don't give the world a $500 full-dive nerve gear in two years. If they can help even one person get closer to walking again, I'll happily applaud every single step they I think something that's very exciting as a long-term application is if you, can, if you can sense what somebody's trying to do with their limbs, what they want to do with their limbs, um, then you can actually uh, uh, do a second implant that's at the base of the spine or, or wherever, just after wherever the spinal injury occurred, and you can, you can create a neural shunt. Uh, so we, I, I think long-term, I'm confident that long-term uh, it will be possible to restore somebody's full body motion. So if somebody even has a severed spine, they will be able to walk again.